Part of the fun of gemstones is sharing it with other people. It's just so vibrant. Almost too good to be true yes. that it could occur naturally. Oh, oh look, look at, at that. that. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. We have a special guest, you may recognize him. He is known on the channel as a Moldavite lover. And now he's back to talk to us about one of his favorite minerals. Yes, so indeed. So welcome. Thank you, <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I can't wait to see what you've brought us. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. So we've got here Chrysocola. Yes ma'am and it's uh, coated with chrysoprase. That gives it a slightly duller complexion on the color, but the color of chrysocolla is what attracts me the most. It's that Caribbean sea blue kind of color, and it just makes you feel good the minute you look at it somehow. It really does. It's so vibrant. It's so rich. Colored by copper, right? Yes, That's yes, ma'am. Copper is the source of that vibrant blue color. Chrysocolla is a hydrated copper phyllosilicate that makes it idiochromatic, meaning that the cause of color is inherent to its base chemical composition. The chrysoprase is coated on this part or is it also this part? No, it's just the, it, this part on the interior of the stalactite or stalagmites. I'm not sure of the difference between the two. This. Heights is the ceiling, okay. right? Okay, yeah, that would be this way. So, so this is probably how they formed, right? Yeah. Because I think the curvature would be at the bottom. These would have formed as stalactites on the ceiling, but typically with stalactites, they form straight down. But in this case, they can be like kind of curved because of the, the wind currents within the ray mine. Hmm, interesting. So this in here, it's not hollow, it's filled. It's filled, yes. And you can see the filling from this angle, which oh, is really fascinating that in another way. That is too cool. So chrysocolla forms as stalactites often. It's boitroidal most of the time. These are unusual examples of its formation. They're really hard to find, actually. Most of the time you go and you see a picture, and you're so excited when you get there, and then you come, and it's sold out. Oh. It's gone, mm -hmm. and so I particularly love that part of it because it's a rare stone, so it's fun to have it. You bring up a good point. If you see a mineral or a gem that you like and you can buy it, get it, because you might lose your chance pretty quickly. It's rare to find it. Why is that? Probably when you have a major mining operation, like the copper mining at Ray Mine, there's a lot of destruction that goes on, and they can't just stop the mining to go around, oh, stop everybody, and run out and grab the mineral specimen. I think when they see the right specimens, they know to probably grab them, but I think a lot get destroyed in the process of the mining. So chrysocolla is a byproduct of copper mining. Yeah, and it's so a secondary ore. If you look over here on this side panel, you also see some interesting thing. That's more of the rounded shape yes. that you would expect to find. Yeah, but, it's more just like a botryoidal formation. Yes on top of that. So you can see this more matte, maybe greasy luster material on top. There's a nice seam, just a layer on top that has this maybe duller blue, maybe like a sea foam, and that would be the chrysoprase that has been deposited on top. But this really vibrant blue is the chrysocolla. Yes. You can see some hints of green as well, which could be another copper material malachite. And here you can see really a good picture of the, the color of blue and the depth of blue and why I make comparisons to the Caribbean. Yes. Because it's oh that my gosh. kind of color. Almost too good to be true. Yes. That it could occur naturally. That it's just so vibrant. All right, you ready for the next box? Yes, ma'am. I don't even know what the next box is, so this will be a <laughs> surprise to me also. Ooh. So this one has a little bit different of a luster going on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and look how smooth it is right there. Mm -hmm. That's again a chrysoprase coating. I just love this piece. The curves and shapes, it's just amazing. And I believe that's malachite. Yes, I think that's because malachite. Because it has the almost like a mossy, fern, like velvety type of luster on it. These are copper materials. And yes. so you can see how copper plus maybe copper carbonate could cause one thing, copper phyllosilicate could cause another thing but the copper is kind of the main ingredient. And I think it has to do with areas that have more oxygen than other areas as okay. to what forms. So it's all about the right ingredients and the right things at the right time. Obviously these have a lot of similarities, but they're so different yes. as well. You know, you have that really clear stalactites. This is almost like 
a bunch of little worms or something like, I don't know, curved around each other. Yeah, I was born with a collector gene. <laughs> I don't know why, where they came from my mother and my father, but I keep these in my office all on the same shelf. And somehow every day when I come to work, I see that shelf and I just have a big smile on my face. I think we're made to enjoy color and that vibrant color, it's hard to not smile or at least just be amazed when you see that. It just has so much life to it. I have a bookcase full of specimens in my office and when somebody walks in, it's always fun to see what catches their eye. Yeah. And different people migrate to different things, but for sure, my migration is to blue. Time for another box? Uh. Oh, that one's cool. Oh look, it's just kind of like a little enclosure. And you can again see some traces, I think, of malachite. And again, it looks like another chrysoprase coated. Can you see that? Oh, look at that. You can see the chrysocolla in the interior, mm -hmm. and then the lighter chrysoprase is around it. Yes. So there's a whole world inside of there. I wish I knew more about the formation, but I have a feeling that the chrysocolla is there and then the chrysoprase is probably in a fluid state and it comes down and just coats and then hardens over top of the, the chrysocolla. When I look at these specimens, I just have a continual smile on my face. When you surround yourself with things that give you joy, it has a great impact on you mentally. I'm, it does. What drew you to this piece? To be honest, I love the, it's like a cave almost. Mm -hmm. And inside the cave are these stalactites and I just see myself in, a, in a, like entering into the small cave and being standing there. Oh, that's too cool. I really like this piece. Yeah. And pieces don't have to be big for them to bring you enjoyment, you know. The big specimens are great, but then the smaller specimens are equally beautiful in their own way. It sets a scene. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So you've started something on Facebook called the Chris Cola Society for yes. people who love Chris Cola for collectors. And I'm just curious for those of us who would want to start a Chris Cola collection, what pieces of advice do you have? I would start on the internet probably and do some comparison shopping and try to get your mind around what kind of a budget do you have to spend. I think we have a photograph, which I'll show you, of probably the largest chrysocolla piece ever found. There's just such a range of pricing that you can buy and this piece would probably be priceless. Wow. It's 245 pounds of chrysocolla. Can you imagine? I need that piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't afford it, that's the problem. <laughs> you don't have a big budget, you don't have to break the bank to still populate some pieces that you enjoy. Is chrysocolla relatively affordable? It can get a, a little bit pricey in the bigger specimens for sure. It's hundreds, thousands of dollars, but in the smaller pieces, it's not as expensive. When a lot of people store their gems and minerals, they'll store them in dehydrated environments because they might store them with important documents or things like that, like safety deposit boxes. Well, for hydrated materials like chrysocolla, like opals, you actually want to make sure that they're not in dehydrated environments. You want to make sure that they continually are absorbing some amount of moisture from the air so that they can maintain their structure. That's a great point. Are you ready for one more? I think so. Okay. Oh, oh I, I love, love this one. This oh one. I love this one for multiple reasons. The hardest part about doing a show like this is that these pieces face the camera. Yeah. And I you, want to be looking to look at, at them it. directly. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's not symmetrical, but it has nice symmetry to it. It's very pleasing to the eye. Going back to your point about collecting, the great thing is that different shapes appeal to different people, and so you can find exactly what you like because no two pieces are the same. And don't buy something just to have it. Buy something that, that makes you feel good. Buy something that you, you really love. While I do love the vibrant color, I actually do kind of like the more muted color of this one as well. And from the back, you can see again that rich color here and this just nice coating on it. It's so cool. So Theophrastus in 315 BC coined the name Chrysocolla. Chrysocolla meaning gold glue because it resembled a lot of the materials that were used to solder gold at the time, which is very interesting. I got one more piece. One more box. All righty. 
Oh, that's pretty. It's nice and sparkly. Yeah, now this one is coated by quartz. Here you can clearly see the sparkle of the quartz. Yes, it has quite the luster. Lots of little quartz crystals on there. Again, more the muted yeah. blue versus the deeper blue of this piece. I love that color. Oh, oh look, look at, at that. that. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, the texture is so smooth. Oh, very smooth. Yeah, that's shocking. Like here, it's, it's almost glass-like. These are small little pieces of stalactites. That's cool. This is really probably one of my favorite gemstones. Really, moldavite and chrysocolla are outstanding to me. Both of them make me feel good when I'm with them. And so my office is decorated with moldavite and chrysocolla. Those two are my main passions. Part of the fun of gemstones, a major part of the fun, is sharing it with other people. That's and getting true. to talk about it and enjoy them together. Yeah, and the Chrysocolla Society is just relatively brand new, but come and join me. Post your pictures and I'd love to see them. Okay, so Bill, on this channel, you may remember, we take a closer look at our favorite specimen on the table. You know, you pick first, then I pick first, or we can pick at the same time, or guest has the choice. Uh, ah, then I'll pick first. Perfect. Mm. Love it. <laughs> Mine is this one. I like the more muted blue, but it still has that sparkle to it. It's so pretty. It does just make me happy. Yes. I love this one because I feel like I'm in a cave. I mean, it's like if you were, if you could get miniature and walk around in there, you would just be amazed, I think. So, so let's take a closer look. Bill, always a pleasure to have you on the channel. Thanks for coming on to show a small part of your collection. Everyone, leave a comment to tell Bill thank you and tell him something that um, you want him to bring next time when he comes back. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. See you next time.